Hello, Tom of All Trades here with uh, Silo House Productions. I got my daughter Ella today shooting the camera. Summertime's here and um, she's into photography and has some free time with uh, school uh, and music winding down. So we thought we're going to try to uh, try to get out a video every week, you know, start slow and, and see how it goes. Maybe people are interested in the content and, and what we're doing. Um, so in this project, we're working on the shipping container section. Just to reiterate, our project is two Brock grain bins. One is a 27 foot in diameter, the other one's 18 foot in diameter. And the roof is uh, for the 27 foot, it's a 30 foot roof. And for the 18 foot, it's a 21 foot roof. And so that gives you an overhang. Uh, that being said, this is a hybrid build. The two shipping con or the two silos are connected by two shipping containers that are stacked on top of each other. So we got the silos mostly framed in, and uh, now we're going to get the uh, the uh, shipping containers mostly framed in. So I'll show you what we have done so far. shipping containers are stacked on top of a, uh, a cement foundation so we have a basement and our house is built into a hillside so half of it is more like a basement and half is um, <coughs> another silo so and it's connected by a cement wall that uh, the shipping containers rest on so in here in order to frame it up for electrical conduit and mainly in this climate, we're mainly concerned with our ability to insulate very well and kind of mitigate conduction and, and things like that. So we elected to do a two by four stud wall. The stud wall is non-load bearing. Uh, the only load on the shipping container ceiling would just be the drywall. And we're not going to insulate underneath this because it's underneath another shipping container but we will insulate up the wall so what i have here is just simple two by fours and then around the windows i'm not quite sure what i'm going to do yet so i left this fairly open and i haven't framed out there but everything is marked on 16 inch centers i don't know i just chose 16 inch centers you could probably do less, get less lumber in here. It's not really holding anything up. Because I was doing it by myself, I was most concerned about how to determine the, um, the uh, plumb or the level of the roof. So what I did first was I screwed, what you're looking at is a ship, in shipping container one, the main sheet metal portion has been removed. That was allowed us to weld the shipping containers together a lot on the outside it's a full length weld top and bottom and then on the inside it's just tacked the you know, spot was stitch welded um, i did elect to keep in the shipping container this section right here on either end this plate it's a heavy i would say three eighths inch uh, corten steel plate that ties into the corner and it ties into this piece right here um, and then we elected this. What we're going to do is drywall, and then we elected to have this so you can kind of see the, that it's a shipping container. And there's going to be drywall on the, on, the, on the wall and then on the ceiling. Um, then we're going to spray foam, if the budget allows, probably full thickness spray foam in here. Um, this will give us more than... Uh, you know, because of the corrugations of the shipping container, you have a good, you know, five inches in places, you know, four inches in, in others. So to keep the, the wall plumb, there's a, there's a piece of uh, square tubing that is the top of the shipping container that the sheet metal welds into. 
So that's really where if you're going to make a plumb wall and have a, a nailer for, for drywall at the top, um, you really need to use that as your basis, I think, for coming out and uh, having a plumb wall. So it's about, at the bottom, it's about an inch away from the, uh, the bottom of the shipping container. And that gives us a nice straight uh, plumb wall. <clears throat> we had other things, other features <coughs> that we have to contend with is the steel boxes for the stairs. Uh, to frame them out, um, we needed uh, uh, to make some special adjustments like here. We elected to not only have a, <coughs> a sill plate or a, a lower plate, but we put blocking in here. Not really for strength, just for a nailer for the drywall in here. And you can see some of it's missing because I haven't um, had, I haven't um, <clears throat> gotten a chance to figure out the windows yet. The windows are sided because we fabricated these shipping containers off-site and using the um, architectural plans. I think I would have done stuff differently, especially with these two windows. They're right by the stairs. I would have probably omitted them or maybe made one larger window there. Uh, that would have been easier. But we didn't do that, and the windows are going to stay, and they're going to be in an odd position, but I think it'll look fine. So if we come over here, we can see um, another view. Once again, uh, we elected to keep, you know, if you, if you imagine this will be a drywall on this end, we elected to keep some of the characteristics of the shipping containers because it's just kind of a neat feature. This is the end that had the doors, and um, we'll probably you know paint you know paint it nicer after the drywall's done. And there's some metal cleanup, you know, some corrosion on the shipping containers that we'll have to clean up. At this end to accommodate the drywall, you have that plate, and so we shimmed this level. And I kind of figured so everything would be nice and level, um, or nice, yeah, nice and level. This is the bottom of the shipping container, and maybe Ella, if you come up the stairs, I can point out it a little bit more. You can look up in here. So the bottom of the shipping container is a series of C channels. The reason why I elected to do the the studs like this is so I can get recessed lighting in there, or maybe if we need to get some additional electrical conduit to, um, uh, to accommodate the wire, a wire chase or something in through here, I don't know yet. But as you can see, the shipping container is very strong. It's got C channels there. The centers vary, they're anywhere from like 10 and a half to, to 12, to, to um, nine and three quarters, you know, it's probably some metric thing. But I elected to just use these because they're real strong, and then I have more options for lighting, I guess, you know, can, can lighting and whatnot. This thing right here is just a safety platform that gets removed. In fact, I can remove it really quickly. And we can come up and look at the progress in the top shipping container. So this is just, here, so. In the top shipping container, we're kind of doing a similar thing. Uh, th this stud wall is, the only load it, it bears is really the um, a one with two by sixes. There's going to be two by six cross members, which is probably a little overkill, but yet again, this is the roof where, you know, the top of the shipping container, and I really want to be able to insulate it really well. Um, so I'll have two by sixes going across this way. We're in the process of building, you know, one wall today. And right now, it's just, um, you know, it moves because it's only anchored to the shipping container in a few places. Um, I don't want the the two by fours to touch the shipping container because I want to be able to shoot some spray foam in there and kind of make a little conduction, you know, uh, eliminate the thermal bridge. I don't know if it's, we'll see, I don't know if it's significant, but it's something to think about. 
the drawback is we did use a lot of lumber, probably way more than we need to, but um, it's, it's really the labor that's costly. Um, up here, the same thing, the windows, I'm not sure exactly how we're going to frame those out yet or what style we're going to go with, so I just uh, elected to leave it uh, as it is for right now. The other thing today, it, it was like 95 and, and sunny, and this morning there wasn't much of a breeze, which there usually is. This evening it's a lot better, but we just cut a temporary door out of here just so I can get some more ventilation in here and uh, make it a little bit more comfortable to work. So this, this will be a patio door when it's done, and it'll go out to this cantilevered deck, which you can kind of get a better feel for, and then we'll have this view out there. This metal building, we use it for storage of building materials, but it will be removed, and the metal will be actually probably repurposed and used in, in the interior of the silo. There's a lot of metal there. Well, and I like the rusty patina, it's going to be cool.